I'm back and food's my life. In today's video, I'm making everybody's favorite dessert and it's coming right up. So sticky date pudding and butterscotch sauce. I don't know anybody who doesn't love sticky date pudding. And this recipe is particularly awesome because these little cakes are guaranteed to come out spongy and soft every time and the butterscotch sauce is to die for. Sometimes I even just make a batch of the butterscotch sauce and keep it in the fridge as ice cream topping because it is so good. I could just eat it straight. Making a good sticky date pudding is not that hard at all. The first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius and I'll tell you what comes next. So the first step is to add one and a quarter cups of water to a small saucepan on your stove top and put it at a high heat. Next, I'm adding 180 grams of dates. Now, I like to use medjool dates because they're just nice and juicy and plump, but you can use regular dates, there's, there's no problem with that. We're going to bring the water and the dates to the boil. Okay, so my mixture is boiling. Now what I need to do is put that heat off, take it off the heat and add to this half a teaspoon of bicarb soda and give that a good stir. And then I'm just going to sit this on the bench for a little while and allow it to cool down. So next I'm going to sift one cup of plain flour into a large bowl. And to this I'm also going to add two teaspoons of baking powder. So here's my baking powder. Put that in, the, put that in there as well. And we're going to sift both of these ingredients together. Now once I've sifted this, I also like to use my whisk to give it another good mix. Just making sure that that baking powder is mixed in thoroughly with that plain flour. And that should be good to go. Okay, now I have a large mixing bowl. And in here I'm going to add 60 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. And 3 quarter cup of brown sugar. Now using my hand beaters, I'm going to cream these two ingredients together until the mixture is light and fluffy. Okay, I've been beating that on high for about three minutes and I'm pretty happy with that consistency now. That looks quite light and fluffy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add two eggs, one at a time to this mixture and we're going to beat after each one until it's just combined. So I'll add one egg and give it a mix. Perfect, then I'll add my next one and do the same again. Okay, now the next step is we're going to stir in our date mixture. Now that's had enough time to cool on my bench top and I'm, I'm really liking that there's still some chunky bits left in here. The chunky bits are important because they're going to have lots of lovely flavour in our cake. But if there are any pieces in there that are a little bit too large for your liking, just use a fork and just give it a little bit of a mash just to get it a nice jammy kind of consistency. All right, so we're going to add the date mixture to our cake mixture and combine these two together. Now at this stage, you're gonna think, wow, this is really wet and yes, it's meant to be, so don't stress because what we're going to do now is we're going to add our flour mixture and we're gonna fold it in using our spatula. Okay, so I've folded that all in and it's now good to go. We're ready to bake our cakes. You still might notice that the mixture is quite wet and that's fine. It just means that these little cakes are gonna be beautiful and light and spongy, which is what we want. Because the lighter and spongier the cake is, the more butterscotch sauce it can absorb, of course. And that is so important. I've had many stodgy sticky date puddings in my time and they're really not great because it doesn't let any of the sauce in. So it's really important that you have it nice and spongy. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you what I'm gonna bake these little cakes in. 
Here I have a baking tray and in it I have eight little ramekin dishes or you could use dariole molds if you have them or you could even use a silicon muffin tray. So I have individually greased each of my dariole molds and by the way these are half cup capacity dariole molds and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these about two thirds each with this lovely batter. Okay, I filled all my moulds up with my beautiful sticky date pudding batter. Now I've just boiled a jug of water. So I'm going to add some boiling water to the uh, roasting pan until I can see that the hot water is about one third the way up the side of those little Dariol moulds. Ramkin dishes I should say. Great. Now that beautiful boiling water is just going to add steam into that oven and that's going to help the cooking process and ensure that these little cakes are beautiful and soft. Now in terms of cooking time I find that I usually need to bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes but I always say look just cook until the tops are lovely golden brown and you've inserted a skewer and it comes out clean because everyone's oven is slightly different but usually I go for about 25 minutes in the oven. Let's go. Okay, while our beautiful little puddings are baking, we're going to make this wicked butterscotch sauce. So I've got my heat on fairly low and to a small saucepan, I've added 50 grams of unsalted butter. I'm adding one cup of brown sugar, one cup of cream, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now on a low heat, we're just going to stir these until the sugar has dissolved and the butter has melted. So all my ingredients melted nicely. I've then put the heat on high and as you can see now it's just coming to a boil. Now that it's boiling, I'm going to reduce my heat back down to a simmer and I'm going to continue stirring this now for about five to six minutes until it's nice and thick. Okay, my sauce has had six minutes now. I can feel that it's thickened and once I put that into a jug, it's just going to thicken even more on standing. So that sauce is now done. Once my sauce is done, I like to pour it straight into a jug and from here, I can just let it cool then put it in the fridge and microwave it whenever I need to serve my puddings. So it's just a convenient way to store your butterscotch sauce. Well, my puddings have had 25 minutes and they look perfect. What I need to do now is very carefully take these ramekins out of the hot water. So I'll use a tea towel and just pop them onto a rack, a cooling rack. And I'm going to let them sit in the ramekin for about 10 more minutes before I then use a butter knife to scrape around the edges and carefully turn them out. I'll then leave them on the cooling rack for a little bit longer until they're nice and cool. So my puddings are still cooling down, but I'm a bit impatient, so I've turned one out and I've drizzled it with butterscotch sauce just so I can do a taste test for you. So here we go. Wow. Wow. Oh, that is so sensational. I've never had a better sticky date pudding than this recipe. It is just so super soft and it melts in your mouth and that butterscotch sauce is just so divine. You've got to give this a go guys. It, I guarantee it will be the best sticky date pudding you have ever had. Serve it with a big generous dollop of vanilla ice cream and it'll just finish it off perfectly. So if you want the recipe for my sticky date puddings, see the description box below where you'll find a link to my website. Go there, find the recipe, do it this weekend, trust me. You will print this one out and you will keep it in your recipe book and do it again and again and again. That's sensational. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more of what I'm doing in the kitchen, hit the subscribe button. It's free. You just get a little notification every time I've released a new video. And I'll see you next time.